Welcome back everyone to another episode of my Flipping to Max Set series. The idea for this is very simple, about a year ago I started with only one GP. I'm trying to eventually turn that into the most expensive gear for every item slot in the game, so we need to get an Elijah for the shield slot for example, a third age pickaxe for the weapon slot, you get the idea. Together it's going to total somewhere between 7 and 8 bill worth of gear, so we need to earn a lot of money. Now as always, if you are enjoying the series, I really appreciate a like in the video, and for every like I get on this video series, I'm going to actually be purchasing items for the ammunition slot, specifically the Dragon Bolt E. So far we're up to like 60 mil just from all the likes, so keep going. Anyway, let's get started. So thanks to some very profitable flips over the last couple of months, our cash deck has grown well beyond max cash and this is good because all of the gear we need is very expensive and we're gonna need a lot of money to buy it all but beyond the actual equipment there is one other major expense i need to take into account and something that i started on last time and that is actually leveling up the account the goal of the series is to equip the most expensive gear in the game which means i actually need to get some levels under my belt now because we have quite a bit of money to work with i'm going to be doing a fairly quick method for everything here in the last episode, we started working on prayer, and we smashed that out very quickly. So we have prayer done, but all of that gear is ridiculously expensive, so to get something moderately affordable, I need to level up both my ranged and defense, and that's what I want to finish up today. Alright, so we're back here at the Monkey Madness 1 tunnels. Uh, we just hit 75 ranged, uh, once again chinning on defensive mode. I think this is going to work out really nicely because my ultimate goal here is to really get 80 ranged and 75 defense because that will be enough to equip both the Elijah Spirit Shield and the Bagasian Boots. Both items I'm looking to pick up here pretty soon. The Bagasians are pretty cheap in comparison so I'll definitely grab those as soon as possible. So I've been here throwing chins for quite a while but we're just about to hit a very important level. 75 defense is done and that is the main requirement I wanted to get out of the way. We'll have to go a bit higher eventually I kind of realized because the Torva Full Helm has a requirement of 80 defense now. Plus we have all the new raids items we'll have to see what happens with those but for now I'm pretty happy. Because we're so close to 80 ranged I'm definitely just gonna go ahead and get that as well. But yeah this worked out really nicely. Well training on the medium fuse way quicker but we are done. There is 80 ranged out of the way which means we're now able to equip the Zerite Van Braces, the Pegasian Boots, and the Elysian. Which means we finally have a couple items that we can buy and of course most importantly equip. So while I've been training what have I exactly been up to in the Grand Exchange? Well. Let's address the elephant in the room by far, and that would be the nearly 10,000 raw slimy eels in the corner. What exactly are those, and why am I buying such a large quantity of them? Okay, well, here is my thought process. There is a new quest coming up soon, the Land of the Goblins, and we already know pretty much everything we need to know about that quest because it's not an original quest line, it's from RS2. So I went ahead and looked at the item list for the RS3 version and I'm assuming that that's going to be the same. Now of all the items on there, the one that kind of caught my eye to maybe hoard, I don't know, scalp is a harsh word I would say. The item that seems the most likely to be in demand but not have a lot of supply is the raw slimy eel. I don't think this is useful almost anywhere in the game. So I started stockpiling them and over the course of nearly a month we ended up buying 10,000 at 1500. So the quest comes out in a couple of days. I really have no idea whether this is going to work out. It's not really a big investment though, so it's not that big a risk. Alright, so the day is here. The Land of the Goblins quest is out, and now we get to see whether or not we can unload 10,000 raw slime eels. Oh man, I don't even know how many people are actually doing the quest today. So first of here, we're going to actually price check one to see what they're at. Uh, can we go 10k? Uh, no, okay, 2800. It's not bad, but nothing spectacular. Uh, it's only really doubling my 13 mil investment. Okay, well, I guess I'll dump them for 2790 for now. I uh, will sell like 2000 at that price, then we'll maybe dump some in for a higher price. Who knows, but it does seem like, uh, well, maybe somebody else had the same idea. Maybe I'm not that smart. Well, this is not looking good guys, we've only sold off like 600 of the raw slimy eels, uh, which is not uh, many. Uh, I think if I didn't get this greedy, 
I could have probably sold off more, but you know, I, I'm just a collector. You know, I, I like collecting eels. That's just my, my thing. Whatever, it wasn't a huge investment. I can leave those in my bank and we'll, they'll stare at me for eternity and I'll just remember this lesson, I suppose. Okay, so I forgot to do this earlier, but finally we can go ahead and buy another item for the account. Or we're gonna go ahead and buy the Pagasian boots because we're now able to equip them. They're actually kind of pricey right now, but we bought them for around 40 mil and that is our second item out of the way uh, feels good uh, mainly because that way we've locked in this item slot if there's another boot slot item that comes out in the near future we don't have to buy that because we already have locked in that item so it feels really good to get that one out of the way <sighs> ever since i've started this flipping series all i ever get in the mail anymore are tax bills those grand exchange clerks are relentless i wish i could get something fun instead well, that's why I'm super happy to say that Bespoke Post is sponsoring today's video. Bespoke Post is simply a monthly membership club. Every month you'll get a themed loot box in the mail. Uh, this is going to contain a collection of kind of under the radar brands that are mainly all from small businesses located in the US. Now every month you're going to get a box sent in the mail and it's honestly a great way to try out new things that you might not have otherwise. Now when you first sign up you can actually take a quiz that will allow Bespoke Post to recommend boxes based on your own personal preferences. That said you'll always know what you're getting in advance which means you can always choose a different box or skip the month entirely for free. Now I actually got sent some of the boxes to try out and I got to pick a couple. The first one I picked was a box called Copper. It came with everything you need to make a Moscow mule, so a couple cute glasses, the ginger syrup, a cloth bag for ice, and a mallet for smacking it. I also got the trail box, which came with a survival handbook, a hand saw, a travel container, and this pretty insane looking knife, which I'm gonna use to cut my cheese. Overkill, maybe. And finally, probably more intimidating than the knife would actually be the Scorch box, which came with a ton of different hot sauces. I've been kind of working my way up to the ghost pepper one, but I'm kind of a wimp, so we're putting it off for now. The Bespoke Post website has a ton of different things to choose from. Next month, I would probably try the Nitro Coffee from the Turbo Box. So if you want to give it a try yourself, now is a great time to try it out. You can use the link in my description or enter the promo code FLIPPING20 at checkout to get 20% off your first box. So give it a try and thanks again to Bespoke Post for sponsoring today's video. So looking forward here, what is next on the horizon for an investment? Well, the biggest upcoming thing is definitely Raids 3, although we don't know exactly when that's coming out. That said, the market for crush items has been going quite crazy lately as there's an assumption that crush is gonna be good at raids three, but we don't know for sure. For example, we're able to get about a five mil flip on the Inquisitor's Mace this week, not bad. But beyond that, I put in quite a few offers for a few items related to raids three. First up, we have the Arcane Sigil, pretty obvious one. It has been mentioned that the Arcane Sigil is gonna be required to make the new Elidness Ward. So although raids three is a while away, something that could be coming soon is actually an updated reward blog, which Usually whenever new information comes out, even if it's reaffirming existing information, that can have a pretty solid effect on item prices. So we're going to invest in the Arcane Sigil along with some other crush weapons uh, such as the Inquisitor's Maze, the Abyssal Bludgeon, the Tyrannical Ring, and uh, we even are buying some Ancient God Swords, although that one is not too related. That one is more of a gut feeling. All right, so it's the next morning and uh, we've actually bought and sold quite a few things here. Now, the Abyssal Bludgeon is something I've been kind of experimenting with. I've just been trying to kind of swing trade it, trying to buy it at its weekly low and then sell it back for its weekly high. For example, we bought 17 of these for 19.5 mil and sold them for 20.3 mil, actually getting us a pretty solid profit of 13 mil. Pretty crazy actually, super happy with that. And I was actually able to already buy another 20 of them for roughly the same price and we're looking to get, well, about a six or 700K margin after tax, so pretty good. We're also able to buy the Arcane Sigils for 161 mil. Now these are going to shoot up immensely when Rage 3 comes out and leading up to it, but they're already on an upward trend this month anyway due to a potential new revised reward blog and that, well, we don't know when that's coming out, but probably in February sometime. And I think we're just going to go ahead and try to buy another set of Abyssal Bludgeons and uh, maybe call that a day. Okay, so we're checking in here actually quite a few days later, I think five days later, 
a lot going on. First up, the Abyssal Bludgeons once again were able to take advantage of a pretty nice swing trade during the week. We bought all of those for $3.95 and sold them for $4.05, so a 10 mil profit on 20 Abyssal Bludgeons. Not bad. So that strategy has actually been working out really well. Uh, we also have the Ancient God Sword. That was just pure luck, but we ended up getting about a 4 mil profit on the Ancient God Sword. So beyond that, I was actually able to purchase more crush items. We got 20 Elder Mauls and uh, 40 Tyrannical Rings. Now, these are again just a guess, but if in the upcoming reward blog they mention crush or they mention yeah, somehow that these could be good, I think the Elder Maul will go up in price a lot. And more so overall, the market in general has just been trending up quite a bit lately so I just want to get my foot in the door on a few different items even if I wasn't 100% sold because things are just been trending up a lot this month anyway. All right so we ended up selling off our arcane sigils uh, might have been a mistake. Now I noticed that they spiked today and I went to put them in for 169 immediately sold so you know we might be missing out on some profit here. That said, it's pretty hard to time things perfectly, and we ended up still making a significant amount of money on the sigils. We bought them for 43 mil and sold them for 502 mil, which means we made pretty well 20 mil on the sigils, which is still pretty damn good. And you know, 20 mil in profit is still 20 mil. Well, finally, after around a week, I have sold off my Inquisitor's Maze. Now, we ended up selling it for 355 mil, uh, which is significantly higher than what I bought it for. Around a week ago, I got it, I think, for 316 mil. Yeah, 316 mil on the nose, and we sold it for a 35 mil profit. Not bad. I, I wish I had bought more than one of those, but I wasn't really sure. Either way, I think we dumped this at the perfect time. As we can look on GE Tracker here, we sold it for 355 mil. I have like the only sale and then immediately after drops by five or six mil. So I'm pretty happy about that. I also ended up making a bit of money on the Elder Mall, but not much. Only around five mil on that one. Well, I just woke up this morning to absolute chaos. Just this morning, the revised blog for the Tombs of a Masket Rewards got released. I'm both incredibly lucky and kind of stupid. I was just kind of sitting around having breakfast when the blog dropped, uh, but I didn't know this until like an hour later, which sucks because it was too late to make an investment in some items, but at the same time I also got stupidly lucky. So let's take a quick look at my offer slots here. Well, one big purchase I made recently is 200 Pharaoh Scepters. We bought them for 2.7 mil. Now why did I do that? Well, I bought those because I noticed that the Pharaoh Scepters were actually at a pretty low point considering the last three or four months, and I thought there would be a bit of upside to this item, but on top of that, in the Poll76 blog, they mentioned that the Pharaoh Scepter might be made one-handed, and those two factors together, I thought, why not? Let's just go ahead and buy a couple hundred of them, be able to go up like two or 300k, and we can make an easy bit of profit from it. So that was my initial thought, but I had no clue that they were gonna actually include them as part of the Tombs of a Masket blog. At the very bottom, there's a section for the Pharaoh Scepter, and essentially they're going to be adding in the Rage 3 Teleport to the Pharaoh Scepter, which is gonna make it a much more desirable item. And thanks to that, the Pharaoh Scepter has shot up so quickly, all the way up to 3.4 mil already. Now it's been an hour or two, so I think I'm gonna dump mine now, because often what happens is in the first hour or two, the item peaks and then falls very quickly back down. Now it could continue to trend upwards after that, but if we think so, we can just buy back in. So essentially that is why I'm gonna dump them now for 3.4 mil, and we're gonna take what looks to be over a 100 mil profit totally by accident, but yeah, that was a complete fluke. All right, so we are still waiting for our scepters to sell off, but while we're waiting here, we have a couple other sales coming through. We have the Zerite Van Braces, which we ended up getting, I think, a four mil profit on. And we also have the Scythe, which we got about a three mil profit on, so seven mil just from a couple flips while I was waiting. You know, not bad. I decided to try to put the scepters up to 3.6 mil just to get even more money from it. No sales so far though, so I might have to lower it. Okay, so we sold off the scepters. Uh, kind of bittersweet. Uh, we ended up selling them for our, well, roughly around our original goal, which was 3.4 mil. 
in total, we ended up making, I think around 130 mil from the Scepter. Totally by accident, so I really can't be mad either way, but we bought all of them for 538 mil and we sold them for 683. But I think there were a couple extras in the sale. So overall, 130 mil in profit. Super happy with that. That said, the Scepters haven't crashed at all yet, so I'll be a little a little sad if they shoot up a bunch after this, but you know, it's hard to know. Well guys, I'm uh, I'm a bit sad. I didn't really expect this to happen. Oh man. Well, it looks like I sold quite a bit too early. They peaked at like 4.3 mil, which is, I mean, I think we missed out on potentially 200 mil in profit. But at the same time, I'm so stupidly lucky that I even was in this position to begin with that I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Now, the reason why I think the Pharaoh Scepter didn't actually crash right after has to do with one thing that I kind of overlooked in the new reward blog, and that is that Pharaoh Scepters would become untradeable after. I missed that on my first read through. And I think that's why they continued to trend upwards for almost the entire day. Just overall my mistake, but I will still take the money. All right, so it's the following day and some of the craziness has died down a bit. Uh, we ended up doing a few flips and they all were fairly profitable, but uh, nothing too groundbreaking here. We ended up flipping some of the new next items, both the Zerite crossbow and the Zerite fan braces for about eight or nine mil total. Although I was definitely way too late to invest in Armadil items, I still managed to get a solid flip on the Armadil helmet. I ended up buying it uh, four or five hours after the blog release and I was able to sell it for a 13 mil profit. Not bad for only eight Armadil helms. I was super happy with that. And we even have these Elder Mauls that we've been holding on to for a long time, which netted us 10 mil. So overall on the day, about 30 mil in profit. So although we do have a couple offers waiting to sell, this week we did pretty well. Uh, this week alone we got over 150 mil in profit, majority from the Pharaoh Scepter, but a couple other things as well. Now if we take into account all of our assets here, that being cash, items on hand that we're selling off, items in the bank, and items that we have equipped, our current total net worth is around 2,631 mil which is around a 256 mil increase from the last episode. Not bad for just a couple weeks work. Not to mention we also trained the account up a fair bit as well. So we're investing some money there. But anyway, I think that's where I'm going to end it for today. A good amount of progress. A lot of things happened in the last couple of weeks. And I'm really looking forward to the upcoming raid and to see what we can get done investment wise for that new content. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you next time. Now before I go here, I want to give a giant thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. Thank you so much to Nell, Zero, The Hybrid, Alejandra, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed at the Dragon tier. You guys are amazing as always. And a huge thank you to Kaiten987, Locusties, Mexos, Base Titch, NDM001, and YoYoSub89 for subbing at the Runite tier. Again, thanks a lot. If any of you are looking for another way to support the channel directly, becoming a YouTube member is a great way to do so. You'll get immortalized in all of my future videos and get a custom role in my Discord server. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.